Welcome back to another edition of What's Next, Living Longer, Better, Smarter. We are happy you are spending time with us. This episode, Getting Healthier Fiscally and Physically, is made possible by Vivid Picks. So I've been in the photo business for 37 years, and I've seen a lot of things come go. But one thing has not changed, and that this wonderful thing we call a photograph captures a moment in time so that we're able to reminisce and relive those memories tomorrow. And it's, and it's important for us to do that so we can share them with loved ones and we can share them with future generations. So please don't let your memories fade. They're important. I'm Fred Fishkin along with Mary Furlong. Hi, Mary. Hi, Fred. I think we have another episode everyone's gonna find very worthwhile. We do, for example, According to the AARP, more than one in five adults have no retirement savings, and nearly two in three are worried that they won't have enough money to last into their later years. And joining us right at the top, we want to welcome the Senior Director of Communications Strategy at AARP, Mary Liz Burns. Hi, Mary Liz. Hi, Fred. So nice to be here with you and Mary. It's wonderful to have you on our podcast, Mary Liz. Um, this survey is a real eye-opener for people of all ages. And what you're trying to do is open some eyes. Um, so better to learn early, correct? Yes, it's always better to learn early about your money. But there's a lot of fear and anxiety about money. It's one of the things that people lose sleep over all the time. Our surveys say that not having enough money or outliving your savings is one of the things that keeps them up at night. And that's why AERP and the Ag Council just launched a brand new campaign. It's called This is Pretirement. And you're thinking, what does pretirement mean? And that pre-retirement or, or retirement. And pretirement, it's that time in your life when you're starting to think about what retirement could look like, where you live, what you want to do, are you still working part time? But you're kind of worried that maybe you haven't prepared enough or given enough time to really think about what pretirement could look like. And that means that you're worried. And we want to try to really conquer those fears so that people can retire with confidence. We've launched some new ads that are just fantastic. They take on that retirement fear. The TV ads have this creature. So it takes that anxiety that's in your head and puts it in the form of a creature that you can speak to. Looks scary in the beginning, but then you start talking and you realize, just a few small steps, just some actions that you can take can really make that retirement fear disappear. And we have some great tips, those steps on a free website, this is pretirement.org, where you can take a quiz. People love quizzes, see where you stand, or you can build your own plan and sort of see where you want to land. At the end of it, you get a free personalized action plan for your retirement savings. And we're just helping folks take advantage of being in a no, you know, no fear, no judgment zone. That's that's really terrific. Now you're actually a certified financial behavior specialist with an MBA and an emphasis in financial psychology. What a background you bring to this! So, tell us from your perspective what's going on with so many people not planning. Is I mean, everybody knows they should, right? This is not a question of the knowledge that people have or don't have. People do know that they, they don't want to live only on Social Security if they can help it or they want to have some savings so they can move to be near their kids or have other options available to them. But we are not wired to save. I love financial psychology. It's a brand new field that actually a lot of financial planners are being asked to take classes in to become a CFP. You have to now take modules on financial psychology. Because it's not just the stats. Like I love you know, studying MBA, but all those numbers paralyze people. Once they start seeing those numbers and saying, I'll never get to that million dollar retirement savings goal, they just give up. And I think that's where financial psychology comes into place. So many people are afraid to talk about money, to look at their money. And I think it just becomes this thing where there's so many other pressing needs right in front of us. When we were cave people, if you save something, you got killed. You know, folks were not like wanting you to save. You needed to make sure you were always just taking care of that present moment in front of you. And whether it's caregiving or anything else, there's so many demands on your money. 
thinking about what you can do to save for your future is just really hard. And that's why these campaigns with small steps, not a lot of calculators, those things seem to really move the dial and give people some confidence to at least do something about their future. Yeah, it's like Atomic Habits, right? You want those small steps. So tell us how the partnership will work with the Ad Council and more about the messaging. We love working with the Ad Council at ARP because they're so driven on social mission and their issues are things that are right in front of us. They've done things like with Smokey the Bear for 85 years and things like drunk driving. You know, this saving for retirement, saving for your future is really a public crisis in a lot of ways. I mean, folks just are not saving at all or they're not saving enough. So working with the Ad Council, they're able to bring some great creative agencies to sit at the table, work with us with some great new ideas, reaching new markets. And then we rely on donated media. So folks like in the podcast here and other areas, you know, to play these ads, to get the message out. And the message is you can conquer that fear, that retirement fear with just a few small steps. And pre-retirement, really wearing that badge proudly that I'm in pre-retirement, I think is really important because it's you're not ready to retire yet, but you got some time to really do some things. So we've got some great small steps. A couple of them, if you've never started saving at all, know you're not alone and it's okay. Start where you are. If you have a retirement savings plan at work, like a 401k or something, you're not taking advantage of it today, just sign up. Even putting a couple of percent of your income to compound over time to really grow can make a difference. And employers often match the beginning dollars. So it's free money. And we also suggest folks really that budget word, that B word really scares people. But I just look at my bank statements. I say what's going in and what's going out. I figure out maybe there's some places I can take some of that going out and try to really put some of that money away for my future or create an emergency fund so that you've got some money to rely on next time something goes wrong with your car. So these kinds of steps and that messaging of you can do it, you've got this, you know, we're, you're not alone. That's the messaging we're trying to get across. Well, that's terrific. Um, you're targeting this to people in their 40s and 50s. Um, do they tend to take planning more seriously once they reach their 60s? Or is that a bit too late? You know, we at ARP, you know, our membership, as you know, starts at 50, but we talk a lot for people who are millennials and even younger, because especially when it comes to saving for your future, the earlier you start, the better, right? So that first job, if you can put some money away in a 401k, or if you become self-employed to set up that IRA, it's really important. But people in their 40s and 50s, they're not only the sandwich generation. When you when you think about like the money challenges that are in that sandwich, you know, that extra mayo on top of that sandwich, you've got you some of them are carrying student loans still, or they're taking on student loans for their kids. Um, some of them never marry. They're having trying to save for a house or you know, be able to afford rent. Many of them have got parents who are aging. The, the demands on people's money is more than ever. And I think folks start to think, what could my life look like if I retire? Will I be able to retire? And I think that's sort of getting to them at the moments that really matter when they're thinking a little about their money, or they think, is there something small I can do in making it bite size? That's why we're trying to reach folks when they've got another 10, 20, even 30 years left, but still you've got time to do something. And of course, they're getting a lot of uh, interest on their savings too. So are there some intergenerational communication efforts going on? You know, I still feel that money is like one of the last taboos that we have. I mean, some of the other topics and those other quote unquote sins folks have talked about, we're, we're more ready to talk about some of those than we are about money. It feels like that's why there's pay inequity. That's why, you know, there's a lot of challenges in terms of how much your health care costs. Like we don't talk about money. So I feel like, especially if you have kids, or even if you're like me, I've got, I'm an aunt to like seven different nieces and nephews. And I always talk to them about like, what's happening with your retirement savings? Or, you know, what are some ways if you want to have these financial goals, how do we make them a reality? So there are some good tips on our website, retirement.org, that talk about how you can talk to your employer to make sure that you are saving enough. And what are the things to consider if you are married or not married and how you bring your spouse into those conversations, really having the time and the energy to talk about money is really well invested because 
it just means that your future can have so many more options in front of you. It, it would seem to me that there are plenty of people in their 60s and, and 70s, maybe even later, that, that consider themselves to be in pre-retirement. Absolutely. There is really no age defined of pre-retirement, I would say, right? It's the mindset. That's what financial psychology tells us. It's like, when are you ready to kind of talk about money and get ready for money? There's a lot of folks who think that they're going to continue to work well into their 70s and 80s. In fact, our latest survey said 38% of people think they're going to work part-time forever because they think they're never going to have enough savings. But we all know the statistics with disability, with unfortunately age discrimination and other things that happen. Not everybody can work as long as they want to. That's why putting aside anything can make a difference. And to me, if you're in your 60s and 70s, you're really thinking about what are those years going to look like? And like, how can I just make sure I make the most of everything that I'm doing? What's that website again, Mary Liz? The website is thisispretirement.org. You can sign up uh, if you want you to be able to save a plan, an action plan that really gets you on your way. It's free. We're not selling anything. We're just trying to sell empowerment. And we're having people really feel like there's a, a few small steps they can take. And that retirement calculator that told you you're a couple million dollars short is not the end of the answer. Keep working on just a few, a few small steps. It can make a big difference. Um, Mary Liz, thank you for coming on and sharing your campaign with us. We'll share it on our podcast and in our newsletter and at our upcoming conference at the National Press Club. So it's exciting. Uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Mary, among the big dangers to our fiscal health are scams that are very prevalent during the holiday shopping season. According to the 2022 Norton Cyber Safety Insights Report, 36% of Americans have fallen victim to online shopping scams during the holiday shopping season. I had a chat with Scott Knapp, Director of Worldwide Buyer Risk Prevention at Amazon, about ways we can protect ourselves. So, Fred, I, one of the things I tell folks all the time is to remember it's always safe to shop on our trusted Amazon.com website, our app, our physical stores. Those are all very safe places uh, to shop and you can trust them. Along with that, I tell people be on the lookout if someone's trying to have you pay for something over the phone or via email. Uh, that's something we'll never have you do. Along with that, uh, gift cards. This time of year, you know, not only do you sometimes get gift cards, but it's also a time you're looking to use them. But beware, uh, which is great, but beware of uh, places that are making you pay with gift cards. There are very, there aren't legitimate transactions that are going to require you to use a gift card to make them to complete them. Um, and the other big safety tip is if you ever are not sure, pause. Just take a breath and then contact us, reach out. You can look at uh, the website at amazon.com or via the app, we have a message center there. Um, but I really encourage folks to slow down a second. And if it's something they didn't expect, uh, take a pause and, and reach out and contact us. I suppose looking at the URL that you've clicked on uh, look carefully as well can be helpful because there are people who might try to fish yes, or that's uh, whatever exactly. we wanna say. Yeah, that's exactly right. If, if if you're hovering over a link, looking at the URL, uh, replying to an email, be super careful if you're going to do that, uh, to also look at uh, the text really carefully. I, I will say bad actors, though, are getting better and better at masking uh, those things such that you really, really have to be pretty savvy uh, and looking at them sometimes to, to be able to untangle them. Tell us about that, Scott. What are some of the most common scams that we're seeing today? The underlying most common one, bar none, is the order delivery or the order confirmation scam that they'll send you something that says there's a problem with your Amazon order. Normally, they'll try to make it something a little pricier, like a smartphone or a tablet, and you'll know that you didn't order it. And so you'll start to get concerned you're going to get charged, and that's how they get you to interact. Uh, the two that are on the rise of late are these things. There's an email attachment scam, which is they'll send you some kind of notice that 
scares you that, hey, you're, there's a problem with your account, you're getting ready to get shut down, and they'll include more scary details in this attachment, and it's inside that attachment that there'll be a link and you know, cue the crazy music. Uh, that, that link is what will then send you to their phishing website. Uh, where then they will be able to collect uh, all kinds of personal and payment information from you as you interact with it. And then the other one that's on the rise uh, this time of year is prime membership scams. It being the holidays, you know, great prime deals uh, abound. And so they'll send you a note that says there's a problem with your prime membership. You know, uh, please talk to us so we can make sure uh, there's no problem. And part of that talking, whether it's texting, phone, or email, is going to be asking for your credit card details, maybe your banking information. There are even some of them that are as bold to say, pretending to be Amazon, that we need to charge you a fee in order to fix your Prime membership. Um, and that's, that's the other thing that's on the rise this time of year. What can Amazon do or what are you doing to try to prevent those kinds of things and and protect consumers overall? We're doing as much as we possibly can. It's an industry problem uh, all over the place. Like for instance, like just as on a personal note, just last week, uh, somebody pretended to be my electric utility <laughs> trying to get me to interact with them. Um, and so we are working across the industry. We are better business bureau, we're part of the Global Cyber Alliance and others working with telecoms to root these out and take some action, hold them accountable. Like just in this past year, we've taken down over 45,000 phishing websites. We've taken down over 15,000 phone numbers from bad actors uh, trying to impersonate us and others. And counterfeits can be a big problem too, with some sellers trying to get away with merchandise that isn't the real deal. Amazon, we're really clear. We have zero tolerance for fraud or counterfeit anywhere in any of our stores and work hard to protect customers and brands uh, from this kind of activity. And if we find it, we'll take the product down and then go after and hold accountable the bad actors who put it there. If a customer happens to get something that we later identify was a counterfeit, uh, we'll make it right. We'll reach out and tell them that's what's happened and refund them without them having to do a single thing. And much like I did talk about with scams, we're doing the same thing with counterfeit, working across the industry with partners, with brands, with law enforcement uh, to help hold bad actors accountable that are trying to deal in counterfeit. Are older adults more prone to being victims here than the general population? It's a great question. And it turns out, uh, no, <laughs> uh, which I guess is a great thing. I, we're all essentially, being scammed, it turns out, is very equal opportunity. Uh, we can all be victims, and actually, there's a little bit of data that suggests uh, the younger population might be slightly more susceptible, uh, and there's some theories that that has to do with around their facility with uh, technology, that maybe they become a little more susceptible to it. But the bottom line takeaway is it's an equal opportunity business uh, for the bad actors. Uh, old, uh, older people are not at any greater risk than others. We all rely on reviews quite a bit of the time. What does Amazon do to make sure the reviews posted are trustworthy? For sure. I, true story, just bought a new vacuum cleaner that I totally relied on reviews because that is, it's a critical part of uh, the shopping experience, especially uh, the Amazon shopping experience. And we have really clear policies uh, against review manipulation or fake reviews and work super hard. We have employed a lot of very bright scientists who've developed algorithms on the lookout for these, back it up with human investigation. And, and we suppress these reviews before they ever make it uh, onto the site for somebody to read. Um, however, if you, know, you as a consumer are reading a review and you don't think it's legitimate, right there underneath the review, there's a report button. I really encourage folks to go ahead and, and use that and tell us, tell us why you think it's bad. And we will investigate, take it down and then take action, ban accounts that are posting such things. Are there other actions your customers can take to report things that maybe don't seem right? Uh, yeah, Amazon.com slash 
report a scam all together report a scam and it's a really simple web form to fill out and tell us what your experience was whether it was a phone an email a text or whatever uh, that you thought wasn't quite right and we'll investigate and take action uh, and then look to hold those bad actors accountable. Fred, that was really some great information from Mary Liz and ARP. Um, and we appreciate Scott Knapp spending time with us as well. And from our fiscal health, we turn now to physical health. For Americans 65 and older, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reports falls are the leading cause of fatal accidents and 3 million are treated in emergency departments for fall injuries every year. Yes, this is such an important issue affecting so many people, and there's some real innovation taking place to help. A variety of medical issues and medications can come into play when it comes to balance. There are exercises that can help. The Mayo Clinic suggests balancing on one foot for a period of time, standing up from a seated position without using your hands. And maybe learning to use Tai Chi or yoga and just being active can help. I try to get in my 4,000 steps a day. Don't you, Fred? I do. And I do 10,000 when I can. And, and standing on one foot uh, while I'm brushing my teeth, uh, yeah. that that's a, of help. Of course, there are still risks even when you're being active. And that's where some innovation from a company called Nobi, N-O-B-I, can help. It's an age tech company founded in Belgium five years ago, and joining us is U.S. business head Niels Coach. Hi, Niels. Good morning, both, uh, and thank you for having me. I'm uh, dialing in from uh, Leading Age here in Chicago that's taking place at the moment, so pleasure to be here. Gee, I was excited that you're there. I wanted to be there. Uh, Niels, we're happy to have you join us and explain to our audience the important role you're playing in preventing falls and getting people to help if they do. Um, Here's a little video to show the story. Meet Nobi, designed for fall prevention, detection, and happy living. A lamp powered by advanced artificial intelligence. The Nobi smart lamps overlook every room from a central vantage point. The lamps are designed for seniors in care communities, in hospitals, and at home. Linda, 72 years old, lives in a residential care community. Nobi is there for Linda night and day. The smart lamp detects that Linda fell and asks, Linda, did you fall? If the answer isn't no, Nobi sends an alert to a caregiver. In the app, Nobi shows an abstract visualization of Linda's position to respect her privacy. The caregiver sees that Linda fell and immediately communicates that they are on their way to help. Nobi also helps prevent falls. For example, by giving insights in how Linda fell. Four out of five falls can effectively be avoided thanks to our smart lamps. 62% of falls happen at night. When Linda gets out of bed, Nobi lights up the room to avoid disorientation. The smart lamp also alerts care staff so they can provide assistance to prevent falls. Our sleep report gives care staff much better insight in a resident's sleeping pattern helping them to provide more individualized care. In some cases, it even helps them spot health issues early on. During the day, the lamp adjusts lighting to support Linda's daily routine. Integration with smart devices enables Nobi to collect data in one health profile. As the world's population ages, Nobi is not only a partner for seniors, but also for care professionals. Nobi supports even the busiest caregivers in managing an individual, personalized care approach. Nobi also takes care of repetitive tasks, so caregivers can continue to focus on warm, meaningful interactions that make a real difference in the life and happiness of residents. Nobi, safe and happy living. Wow, that's so impressive. Congratulations, Niels. Tell us how your innovation came about in Belgium. How did the story begin? Sure, absolutely. Um, so I think the story starts with our, uh, our founding fathers, a team of three with uh, extended experience in senior care, whether it was uh, managing communities. Our CEO has, uh, has a background uh, as part of the um, operator group of 80 communities in the Benelux, so Belgium, Holland, and Luxembourg. 
whereas we have a few people on board as well, part of that founding fathers team that had experience with technology specifically on the software as well on the hardware side, targeting um, age technology and, and, and solutions specifically for seniors. So that's where the story started um, for Nobi about five years ago, when we were looking for a solution to uh, to a few different problems in the, in the senior living industry. Um, obviously, the, the the quick growth and um, the expected growth for the for the group of seniors, people older than sixty five, um, is is going to be something that uh, technology is going to be a very reliable solution for in the future as well. Um, and then secondly, and then more so on the on the congregate living side, is the fact that there are um, fewer and fewer caregivers that can reliably provide care. Um, so we were hoping to really tackle those two problems with a solution um, and do that in a very aesthetic way. Um, so one of the reasons, for instance, why we built our technology into a, a lamp fixture was uh, because we wanted to create a desirable component that fits in with the design of whether you're aging a place or whether you're living in a in a senior living community uh, would really fit the aesthetics of, uh, of the environment you would be living in. You know, there are wearables on the market, including some smartwatches, Apple, Google, Samsung, and a whole bunch that can detect falls. They can certainly be helpful, I think, but tell us your thoughts and maybe how they can fit into the picture along with Nobi. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, from our perspective, for Nobi, uh, from Nobi's side, uh, what we what we prefer to do is is what's called passive monitoring. Uh, so making sure that we're not necessarily relying on uh, our users to to have a wearable on them or to have specific technology that they have to carry with them. Um, it makes reliable solutions a lot um, a lot more trustworthy. If if we can say this this technology is going to be available in the space you live in. And uh, it can always be complemented. Like you said, Fred, it can be complemented with wearables. Um, yeah, but you might be going well. out the door, right? So you're not, you're not where the Correct. Is. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we really, from a Nobi perspective, we really focus on the in-house or in-apartment monitoring of the residents. Um, so there is technology out there that if uh, once you decide to, hey, I'm going to go out on the road, that allows uh, for specific tracking or for specific monitoring as well. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. You've got some sophisticated AI that you're using here. Tell us yep. about that. How the, how Absolutely. this comes into play? What this looks like a lamp hanging from the ceiling, right? What's it doing? I'm, I'm Absolutely. I'm glad you mentioned that. It absolutely looks like a lamp. And that was the intent is to tuck away a lot of technology built into a fixture that was not going to stick out. There's a lot of technology out there where, uh, especially seniors, not necessarily adapt to a lot of modern day technology, would feel like they're being watched or feel like they're being monitored. So our main goal was really to tuck the technology away in, in something, again, that would uh, not stick out like a sore thumb. Uh, and you're absolutely right. There is uh, a lot of uh, a lot of technology built into it, and there's a lot of uh, AI uh, empowered uh, functionality that's running in our lamp. Designed and developed by people much smarter than me. Um, but what we do is in our lamps, essentially, we have AI monitoring the location that our light fixtures are installed in, and they monitor for quite a few different things, um, including, of course, uh, one of our our, our core solutions is uh, is providing fall detection and fall prevention, even more importantly, solutions for the residents that we and the seniors that we monitor. Um, so that's one, one thing that the AI is looking for. Um, from a functionality perspective, really what it's doing is it's looking at the room it's installed in, and it's making sure that it's not seeing a resident on the floor. If, uh, if it does, in fact, think, hey, I'm seeing the person I'm supposed to be monitoring on the floor at this point in time, it will actually ask a verbal question. So we will say, hey, Neil, uh, we've seen you have fallen. The answer will be asked if the resident responds with anything but a clear no, then um, an, an alert is triggered. And that alert can go out into the world in a variety of different ways. So what we're doing here in North America, we're working together with a lot of the, the central station monitoring services or remote uh, stations and resident monitoring service that are being provided that can then really dispatch um, aid or help as needed. Right. So there will be actually following to the question that's asked and the notification that goes to, out to our our um remote services or remote support services, we will um, then be able to set up a two-way communication. So that aid or that person that's going to triage the aid that's going to be sent to the, uh, to the location where the fall occurred is going to be able to communicate with the person on the floor prior to doing that and really determine what, what actually happened and to what degree do we need to act and how quickly do we need to act. Now, that's, so, that's, that's after someone has fallen, getting the help to them quickly. How do you help to prevent falls? Yeah, very good question, Fred. Um, in a few different ways. So um, 
aside from being able to do fall detection using the AI in our land, we monitor for a few different events. What we know statistically is that a lot of falls, if not most of the falls happen at night when uh, residents or seniors are getting out of bed and trying to make their way to the bathroom. So core functionality for, for Novi is that we install our lamp um, at a bare minimum over the bed uh, for the resident that we're looking to, uh, to monitor or the person that we're looking to monitor and then in the bathroom as well. So that we can really monitor those two locations and the road between the two where falls mostly occur. Aside from detecting the fall or the person on the floor, we can also monitor for a few different things. So the AI is smart enough to see that uh, a person would be sitting up in bed or is starting to get out of bed. Um, and based on that, we can have a few triggers that take place depending on how high the fall risk is for a specific person that can really be drilled down and customized to that specific user. Um, we can proactively start turning on the light, meaning that our AI engine in the lamp sees the resident, see the person sitting up in bed. As soon as that happens, we start slowly illuminating the room. By the time the person makes it to the edge of the bed and starts standing up, we have lit up the entire room and we've created essentially, one, a good way to find your bearings in the middle of the night, but also a lit way to, uh, to the bathroom, uh, to the bathroom rather. So a safe pathway to make, uh, make, uh, make them have you know, a, a good way to get to the bathroom without potentially falling. As soon as they walk into the bathroom, our Nobita, our smaller version of our light that you saw in the video, um, it will light up automatically as soon as the person walks in there. And then once they're done in the bathroom and make their way back to the bedroom, the process basically turns around. We turn off the light in the bedroom, or in the bathroom rather, um, automatically. And as soon as the person sits down on the bed, we start slowly fading the light in the bedroom until their head hits the pillow and we turn out uh, the light completely and it's dark again. So that's a big way of preventing falls. We've seen statistically with a lot of our uh, customers that are using Nobi and Nobita today that we've prevented quite a few falls, um, upwards to in the 80%. In some cases, even so, and we have some, some stories to share there, but we have, uh, we've had occurrences where we have people falling multiple times at night that uh, after deploying Nobi and Nobita haven't fallen a single time since. Um, so it's really proven its value. And it's something as simple as just turning on the lights that can uh, can help that preventative matter taking place. That the second piece to those different monitoring events that we can that we can detect is not only turning on the lights, but also potentially proactively notifying them. If we see someone is getting out of bed and we know there are high risk fallers, we can actually let someone already know and have the ability to, again dial into the room and say, Hey, we're trying to we're seeing that you're trying to get out of bed. Um we could actually send help right away to uh, to assist with that and to assist in uh, in helping you get to the bathroom. So again, there preventative matter that uh, that helps prevent a lot of falls um, on the back end. Yep. Well, a good use of AI. I, I think one in three falls do happen in the bathroom and at night. So uh, now tell us um, how would someone find one of your lamps and give us more information about the cost. And are you primarily tar targeting senior living or the at home market? Uh, actually, both. So for the North American markets, um, we're headquartered in Houston. But uh, what we do is we actually approach different uh, two different quote unquote verticals of the of the senior care industry. Uh, one being the congregate living or the senior senior living industry, which is one of the reasons why we're here this week in Chicago at leading age. Um, and then secondly, um, we are focusing on the consumer market as well. So uh, that's essentially what we've dubbed the aging in place space for uh, for Nobi. Um, and we take our products to market through resellers there. So we have a few reseller partners in um, in the U.S. that allow us to really uh, connect with the, the the people that prefer to age at age at place or age in place or age at home, and uh, and stay in their homes that they've lived in for God knows how many years. So um, for those customers and for those users, we make our products available through resellers that are either nationwide or strategically placed in specific territories where we're really focusing in on and zeroing in. Can you give us an idea about the costs involved, just so our audience uh, has an idea, anyway? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, typically, we have uh, there's a, a a hardware cost for the the lamp. Um, so we have a few different iterations of that lamp with different feature functionalities. They come in a few different colors and a few different mounting uh, ways or ways of actually installing them on the ceiling. Um, and there, it, it's tough to say because we operate again in, in two different industries. Uh, but I would say that for roughly uh, around two thousand dollars, you can get a combo package where you have our Nobi, which is where all the brains and all the smarts reside, and then it's smaller siblings that would be installed in bathrooms and smaller areas that we need to cover, kind of as a peripheral to the main bathroom or the main bedroom rather and the living room. So roughly two thousand dollars gets you that um, 
get through that package. And then we have a monthly subscription fee uh, of roughly 50 to uh, to $60, depending on, on where and who we're installing our equipment for. So congratulations are in order. Um, Cypress Living in Florida has decided to install your lamps, correct? That is absolutely correct. Yeah, we're very excited. So um, for starters, an absolutely beautiful and gorgeous community. If you guys ever have a chance, I would recommend visiting. Uh, but we had the pleasure even of having uh, Joe Velderman, who's the director of innovation at um, at uh, Cypress Living. We had the pleasure of hanging out with him here at uh, at Leading Age as well. And yes, they have a, a very neat um, expansion product or project going on, a construction project where they're currently building uh, roughly 50 new high-end bungalows um, that are going to be smart living bungalows. A lot of technology is going in, in there. And the technology of choice for fall prevention and fall detection and some of the other things that we're doing for Cypress Living has uh, has become Adobe. Um So the intent is to start the project at Cypress Living up with um, with that construction project and then essentially expand throughout the entire campus for the next uh, couple of years. Well, congratulations on these innovations. And you seem to be adding to the capabilities uh, pretty frequently, too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, again, going back to those people that are much, much smarter than I am uh, that we have uh, working for us here at uh, at Nobi is uh, we actually are starting to develop a few things using sound AI. So since we have a pretty high end uh, microphone built into our uh, into our light fixture used for the two way communication feature and some of the responses that uh, that residents and seniors can have to the questions that the lamp will ask um, if the fall is taking place. Uh, we're actually using that to our benefit as well from a from a feature functionality perspective. Um, so some of the things that we're working right on right now is sound AI specifically, for instance, where we're going to be able to determine pulmonary problems that may start occurring for seniors. Uh, so initially, it will start off with being able to do cough detection. You know, resident is perfectly healthy or a person is perfectly healthy, but maybe tomorrow they start coughing at a pretty frequent rate. Uh, that is definitely something you want to know, um, both for people living in senior living environment as well as for residents staying at home and aging in place. Uh, so that'll be the first step for us to kind of open up that sound AI where we're again going to be able to collect a lot of data that could be resident or, or person critical and be able to analyze that and then have a reaction or a trigger on the back end that would allow for additional care or a, a different way of, of, of life setting for that specific person that's being monitored by Novi. Well, that's a great story and a great future. So we'd like to stay in touch with you and also cover that deal as they happen with Cyprus and others. So thank you again, Niels. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys for uh, for the time as well. We're very excited and uh, we'd love to stay in touch and keep you guys posted on what's happening on Nobi's side. Terrific. Yes. There's more information at nobi.life, N-O-B-I dot life. Mary, lots of ground covered today for fiscal and physical health. Yes, I think news that everyone can use, I hope. Um, we'll have more to talk about soon, Fred, when it comes to innovation and investment from our What's Next Washington Innovation Summit, Summit coming up next month. The theme is on innovation and investment in the care marketplace. Yeah, it's a big industry event at the National Press Club, bringing together entrepreneurs, investors, and more. It takes place December 12th and 13th. If you're involved in age tech, Senior Living, you don't want to miss it. The website for more is WashingtonInnovationSummit.com. Yes, the agenda looks great. Uh, actually, uh, both of these groups should be there. Uh, AARP is the lead sponsor, but these solutions that we just talked about in fall detection are really important for caregivers to know about. I hadn't realized how club sandwich the next generation is going to be and how they're going to need these new tools to manage caregiving. So it's Absolutely. great to see innovators from all over the world, I think. Absolutely. And uh, we're really looking forward to it. We want to thank our sponsor for this episode, Vivid Picks. Don't let your memories fade. The website is vivid pixpix.com. While you're there, click on Solutions and learn about their innovative memory station. We appreciate all of you spending time with us. And you can always find more at maryfurlong.com slash podcasts.